Hi, and welcome to Thriver TV, the place to break free from narcissistic abuse with quantum tools and understandings. So today's Thriver TV show is another one about clearing our susceptibility to narcissists. And this is a really big one. It's arguably the biggest one that I'm gonna do on this series. And it's to do with being an empath. Now, before I go into how that makes us susceptible to narcissists, I want to go through a few of the checkpoints about being an empath, because you might already know that you're an empath, or maybe you will really, really resonate with this. So an empath is somebody that feels other people's energy profoundly. So you might walk into a room and nothing's been said, but you can feel that feeling of cut the air like a knife. And you can sense when people are not right and they're not down. And you might even find yourself inadvertently taking on their mood or even their headache or their backache. And maybe you're not comfortable in public places where there's a lot of people or commotion or noise. And it's likely that you're gonna feel really connected to things like animals and children and the underdogs and people that are suffering. And you might hear sad stories and plights of people and animals, and it can virtually bring you to tears. You feel it so intensely in your body. So empaths are really, they're nice people. And empaths are people who tend to want to fit in with people and work with people. They're not people that really want to stand out in the crowd and say, look at me, look at me, I'm the center of attention. But what empaths often find is that they are organizing themselves around other people's moods and behavior rather than being able to really anchor into creating what feels healthy or safe for them. And where did all of this start? Where did it start? It started where everything starts, in our childhoods and for empaths, they were likely to be pretty sensitive children anyway, children that needed time out to themselves and it might have been children that had imaginary friends or um, the boogeyman was under the bed or in the closet, that type of child. But what is also likely in an empath family is that there were members of the family whose energy was strong or disruptive or even abusive and unsafe. And what happened is the empath was feeling that intensely and very much focused outwardly, thinking, how do I stay safe? How do I navigate this? What do I have to do to keep that person from going off or getting angry at me? And you know, that's very much what the empath thing is all about, rather than really knowing what I feel and what's my truth on this, I'm trying to work out what everybody else's is so that I can uh, get through this smoothly. And empaths may not have realized that from a very young age, they've actually been organizing around everybody else's stuff. Empaths are incredibly naturally tuned in people and they actually have incredible intuition, which means that an empath can sense and know things that they don't have to have physical logical proof on. But what gets really confusing for an empath is they don't know how to trust their own gut feeling. Now this also started from an early age. So an empath was likely to sense that something, as an example, was wrong with mum and dad and went up to mum and dad and said, you know, are you two arguing? Is everything all right? Something's not right. And then mum or dad, thinking that they were protecting the child, lied and said, no, everything's fine. There's nothing wrong with us. So the empath took that information from the parent, which is their God, and internalized, I must be wrong. My internal GPS must be off because my God, my parent, tells the truth. They're my role model. So I want parents to really deeply understand out there, do not lie to your children. The greatest dysfunction comes from lies. It is much better to be honest and say, yes, mummy and daddy are arguing with each other at the moment. We're going through some adult stuff, but we're trying to work with it and we still love each other. That would be much more appropriate. 
because what happens with the empath is when they've learned to distrust their own um, internal resources, then they're trying to gauge and create their life from everybody else. Now, this is such a dangerous, dangerous recipe for narcissistic abuse. I can't emphasize that enough. So parents, please stop lying to your children. We all did it as parents, but when you learn this stuff, you realize just how damaging it is and you stop doing it. So other things about empaths can be empaths because of the incredible uh, overwhelm that they can feel with the sensitive energies that they're taking on from their environment. Empaths may be people that are prone to addictions. They're people that are trying to burn off the anxiety of those sensitivities through substances or workaholism or trying to distract themselves. So they're actually self-avoiding a lot so that they don't need to feel their feelings. And empaths really don't like confrontation. They're the type of people that really don't want to be too out in the public eye and they don't want to stand out. And it will usually take them a lot to create a scene or to stand up for their rights. Interestingly, they may do it for other people, but they really struggle to do it for themselves. Because a lot of empaths are really terrified that if I do step up and out and I'm really visible and I'm seen, that I could be a target. I could be attacked and I could be torn down from other people. So a lot of empaths don't really feel safe in their own body. And you, we all know, or most people in narcissistic abuse communities know that expression, flying monkeys, and I just want to say something here. I really don't like that comment when people call people flying monkeys. I, I find that incredibly disrespectful and unhealthy. And the reason I say that is because for most of us, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, we were recruited as flying monkeys. So empaths and codependents tend to have a great deal of compassion for the hard luck stories. We give a lot of empathy and a lot of compassion and we want to, you know, bat for people's um, causes people that have been wronged and narcissists are so good at lying and fabricating evidence and making out they were the victims and they were the hard ones uh, hard done by people that a lot of empaths become flying monkeys okay they stand up for other people's causes and not their own and that can be um, one of the greatest hooks and things that can happen in narcissistic abuse so you know, please, if you're using that expression, um, take some honest responsibility and also to have a think about the people that are possibly recruited are probably people with good hearts who uh, feel for others who have been significantly lied to and manipulated by a very clever pathological liar, which is a narcissist. So enough about that little lecture. So the problem with being an empath is that we can be so um, not anchored in our own body and so outside our own body trying to monitor and navigate everything we're feeling off everybody else that we're not self-partnered. Now, when we relate this to narcissistic abuse, this is highly, highly important. And I want you to understand a very important quantum truth here is that it is not opposites attract. That's actually an energetic impossibility. It's actually the similarities from an emotional resonance uh, state that create why people come into each other's lives. Now there's a very direct correlation here for different reasons, but the same reasons. Because what we have, uh, just like the codependent and the narcissist have a lot of similarities, they really do. And I wrote a complete article about that, which is the codependent and the narcissist, two sides of the same coin. And I'll put that link up for you so you can read it because it's a lot about this stuff too I'm talking about today. But what we have with the empath and the narcissist is a similarity that 
both people are looking outside themselves to other people to try to stay safe. So what's happening for the narcissist is the narcissist has such a fragile, devastated, um, damaged inner identity that the narcissist divorced from a very early age, that the narcissist is trying to organize his or her life around control, being able to suss other people out, feel their energy, know what's their on switch and their off switch, know how they can be controlled, know how they can be brought down so that they are not going to be in a position to threaten the uh, narcissist's fragile inner identity. So the narcissist is not navigating life from the inside out, the narcissist is doing life from the outside in. And it is the same with the empath. The empath doesn't trust their inner being, hasn't been able to establish a strong sense of self-partnering, self-soothing, uh, self-generation from an early life. So the uh, empath is trying to know how to be and how to behave in order to feel safe and how to appeal to people and how to help them or how to fix them or how to stay away from them uh, by feeling everybody else's energy. And this is the empath state of normal as it is the narcissist state of normal because it's all about emotional survival. And we can really think as an empath, well, well, how else do we help people? How else do we do our missions in the world? How else do we make a difference if we're not going to feel um, and be tuned into our environment and other people? And I want, you to, I want to give you a really good analogy about this so that you can understand. Let's say somebody was going to do a speech to an audience and it was about something that they were passionate about, which was their gift and their contribution to the world. Now imagine that they're standing on stage and they're looking out at everybody in the audience and they're thinking, oh, that guy three aisles down to the right isn't getting what I'm saying. He's got his arms crossed. He's, um, he's get, he's, I'm really triggering him. Oh, the people up in the back row, they're talking to each other. They're not even listening to me. Oh, that woman there, she looks way too conservative to even hear my message. What happens is, is we are giving off over power. We're handing over power. We're handing power to everybody outside of ourselves. And then what we're doing is we're showing up as a non-authentic self, trying to be everything we can be in order to win approval, safety, love, recognition, whatever it might be. Now let's imagine standing, somebody standing on a stage who is just so anchored in their body and they are just channeling source through themselves as themselves being their heartfelt mission, being their heartfelt message, delivering it with no need for outcome, with no need for any specific result other than to be that pure, heartfelt, truthful message. How do you think that would be received as opposed to the person before? Can you feel the power in that? And this is what I'm talking about because there's all of this information out there about being an empath. Okay, I was an empath. I don't even like to use that word anymore. What I prefer to use is that I'm channeling the divine in authentic ways. And really what that means is that when we're doing that, that we can absolutely be empathetic, we can make a difference, we can help people, we can love people, we can lift people, but we do not have to drown with them. And we can be checked in with what's going on while we are in our body in healthy ways, checked into our own heart, soul and truth. Now as an empath, when we're hooked into a narcissist, we're not doing that. And what's happening is we are outside of our own body 
trying to navigate and we're handing power over to people that are also outside of their body trying to navigate. Now we know that narcissists are not going to do the inner work. The very definition of narcissism is unconsciousness and it is I am not going to heal my inner wounds and my inner traumas that cause me to act in maladapted ways. That's what being unconscious is. But as an empath, absolutely we can work on that. We can do something about that and we can change so that we can be radiant and empowered and in our body rather than trying to appease somebody and trying to dancing around their wounds while we're not getting our needs met. And that's what happens with narcissists so, so much because empaths will generally, because of the sensitivities and the high intensity of emotions that they're picking up from everybody, which I promise you, when you've healed your inner traumas and anxieties and you're anchored in your body, all of that stops. But if you haven't done that, and you naturally tuned into the outside, you do feel everything. And then what happens is, because it's already pretty overwhelming and confusing, you're not sure which is yours and which is mine, then if something crops up where you're getting a red flag or you're getting an inner warning, you're going to be more inclined to detach and pretend it's okay because it's just too overwhelming. Or you're gonna try and jump in there and fix it and keep the peace. And either of those strategies are just terrible in as far as being with a narcissist because the narcissist will just make mincemeat out of you. The only inoculation against a narcissist is to show up as radiant and authentic and truthful in your own body, which means that you ask the questions, you confront things, you have the difficult conversations, and then the narcissist unravels, you get insanity in your face, or you get answers that are, have all sorts of deflections and projections, and they're not clean, clear uh, at all. And you go, you're not healthy to be with, and you walk away. And that's how easy it is in the future going forward when you have become anchored in your own body and your own truth, being able to trust your own navigation and show up as an adult in your body confronting things healthily and directly when you need to do it. But as the empath, when we're unhealed, we're not doing that. So we're handing power over to narcissists and really what we're doing is we're hooking into them, trying to get all of these intense emotions to die down by changing and fixing another person, which as we know, just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Now, empaths feel everything and I used to too, and since doing the inner work and getting rid of traumas and insecurities and anxieties out of my body, out of my cellular being, I can still uh, do healing work on a, on a massive scale, on a big scale, but it doesn't have to be in the old ways that I used to do it where it was that overwhelming, it used to nearly take me out. It really did. And the thing is, empaths are very, very drawn to being healers and spiritual advisors and counselors and nurses. And, you know, we are here to make a difference. There is no doubt that an empath is here to heal the collective, to bring heaven on earth and make a difference in this world that is astounding. But what empaths need to realize is we've got to get our focus off fixing everybody else and healing them. And we have to heal ourselves first so that we can show up radiant and empowering and not drown in the mess. Because if we're gonna drown in the mess, we're going to get connected and attached to messes that we're going to end up drowning in. And that's exactly what happens with narcissists. We're not here to transform the world. We're here to transform ourselves. And actually the irony is, is that when we transform ourselves one person at a time, that is when we transform the world. So this is a much bigger message than just being hooked in with a narcissist, the whole empath message. So what I wanna do, I wanna share a mantra with you that as I was preparing this video, I channeled it. And rather than just do it now, 
I want to capture the channel that came through at the time so I did write it down so I do want to share it word for word and what I want you to do is repeat it so we're going to repeat it out loud and this might be something that you want to write down or you want to record okay so this is it so repeat after me it is safe for me to be myself it is safe for me to be in my own body. It is safe for me to not march to everyone else's drum. It is safe for me to honour how I feel and say no. It is safe for me, if necessary, to say no and walk away. It is safe for me to honour myself and so it is done and so it is true as it is my birthright. Amen. So I hope help that that is hope sorry I hope that that has helped to start empower you and be able to allow you to understand you need to get into your own body and be doing life from the inside out while you're checked in and you're at one and you're self partnered with yourself because that is where your power is that's where you tap into infinite wisdom infinite resources source and life flowing through you as you that's when you're in true self function and that's where we all want to get to so if you want to access some ways to even more powerfully find out how to do this and how to get into true self function you can do that by accessing the link that comes up clicking the button that comes up on this video because that's my webinar that I do which is the three keys webinar which um, shows you how to get the traumas out of your body up level and bring in your true self function so you can get anchored all right so that's it for me for this video and as always keep smiling keep healing and keep thriving because there's nothing else to do lots of love bye bye